Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day to all. I am Dr. Carmencita Padilla, one of the proponents of the newborn screening program in the Philippines. Join me in uncovering the wonderful story of newborn screening in our country. Together, let's zoom in on what makes newborn screening a comprehensive program for every Filipino here at Newborn Screening in Focus. In this program, we will discover the humble beginnings of newborn screening and how it evolved into a comprehensive health program of the Department of Health. We will discuss the very process of newborn screening from the moment the child is born and into the continuing care available for all newborns found positive for one of the conditions in the panel. We will also zero in on features and management of each of the conditions included in our panel. We will also interview patients as well as their parents. And in keeping up with the challenges, talk over how facilities and centers manage to give quality service despite the limits brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. This program is the newest educational platform for our newborn screening coordinators. One in every 7,200 health facilities throughout the country. We also hope that this series will also benefit the health professionals, physicians, nurses, midwives, med techs, nutritionists, as well as students in the health professions. So take a seat. Get comfortable as you're in for quite an adventure here at Newborn Screening in Focus. Newborn Screening po kasi ginagawa po ito dun sa mga bagong panganak na baby. Yung Newborn Screening, actually lahat naman ng kids dito nag-undergo din ng Newborn Screening after nila ipanganak. So, ang pagkakaalam ko sa Newborn Screening is um method or way siya para ma-detect if there's any possible illness na hindi na-detect agad after delivery. Na kailangan po nila uh, mag-undergo po doon sa newborn screening para malaman po kung merong mga early deficiencies po na ma-detect po sa doon. Um, yung kilala kami, kami mismo nagpa-newborn screening. Yung mga bata dito sa bahay, lahat sila na newborn screening. Tapos yun nga, kung anong pagkakaalam ko tungkol dito, ba parang uh, tinatest yung blood para makita kung merong mga any future disease na hindi ka agad na pikita during delivery. So yun nga, parang the thing is like parang preventive measure para malaman ka agad kung may mga possible illness in the future. Sa panagig po po, mahalaga po yung newborn screening kasi uh, dito po mga pagbubuntis niya and hindi po naapektuhan si baby sa mga kinain po or mga naging uh, na, or mga gamot na natake po ni mami during pregnancy. Ako tingin ko napakahalaga talaga nun. Kaya nung yung sa, un, yung sa isang baby namin kasi hindi siya part ng package, nung delivery package, pinanyubon screening talaga namin siya um, na labas pa dun sa package kasi yun nga, tingin namin importante talaga yun para at least uh, malaman mo kagad kung mapaghandaan nyo kagad kung merong any nga mga future illnesses na pwedeng mangyari dun sa bata kaya mabuti ng sigurado kasi syempre ano yun eh, uh, health and kaligtasan ng bata yung nakasalalay dun Kaya ako ako po yung tatanungin mahalaga po siya kasi uh, ma- malalaman po natin kung paano maalagaan si baby ng tama Bilang isang first time mga kami po, ipapanyumor screening ko po si baby para din po makapag-up na uh, habang inaalagaan ko po siya, wala po akong maling maibigay po na gawin sa kanya or vitamins or pagkain po uh, in the long run po. Advancement in science and technology has made it possible to fulfill the dream that health is a human right. One of these technologies is preventive, affordable, very effective, highly beneficial, and very much accessible in our country. 
This technology is known as newborn screening, a universally accepted public health program for the early identification of disorders that can lead to mental retardation and death. There are many causes of developmental delay and death, but today we are talking about conditions that can be reversed, treated, or managed. They, there may also be causes which are irreversible, but right now, we will only be talking about conditions that can be saved by early management or treatment if detected early through newborn screening. Newborn screening entails the collection of a few drops of blood from the heel and placed into a special filter paper. Newborn screening using the filter paper was introduced by Dr. Robert Guthrie in the U.S. in the early 60s and since then has been implemented worldwide. Newborn screening worldwide has allowed early diagnosis shortly after birth for prompt diagnosis and management. So this program is not only for the Philippines but for all newborns born in all countries in the world. So newborn screening is, is really about saving lives, regardless of where you are born, whether you're from a high-income country, a middle-income country, or a low-middle-income country. Every baby deserves to be saved with newborn screening. Newborn screening was introduced in the Philippines only in 1996. It started as a research project of the newborn screening study group and the group the project was called the philippine newborn screening project it was really the spirit of volunteerism that started this project it received partial support from the university of the philippines manila and the philippine council for health research and development of the usd primarily for the testing of newborns from the government hospitals so in other words, without data, we will not be able to convince government. And it was very important for the pioneers to actually come up with a project so that we can give the data to government in support of newborn screening for all newborns in the country. The newborn screening study group was composed of the department chairs of pediatrics and obstetrics and gynecology from 24 hospitals in Metro Manila. We actually sent the invitation to 75 hospitals then, but at the end, only 24 participated in this research. There were 18 private and six government hospitals. And just like any research, the guidelines were very strict so that the outcome of the research is something that can support a policy. Now, each of these hospitals had a newborn screening coordinator who took charge of orientation seminars, sample collection demonstrations, submission of the samples to the lab, relaying results to the physicians, and then eventually following up the patients with the positive screening results. To just imagine this is more than 25 years ago and the coordinators then most of them are actually retired by this point and i thank the pioneers for joining our our crusade to get newborn screening implemented in the philippines in support of the project then secretary alberto romualdez issued doh administrative order 1a on january 3 2000 laying down the policies on the nationwide implementation of newborn screening. I really consider this as the first break of newborn screening at the Department of Health. We had a national campaign, we had a national poster, and this poster became the signature material of the program and was displayed in all of the lobbies and nurseries of all hospitals and birthing centers. In this poster, the girl had newborn screening done at birth. She was treated shortly after birth. Hence, she is normal and she is now an engineer. 
The boy in the poster, on the other hand, he did not undergo newborn screening. He was actually seen at the outpatient department at PGH at the age of 12 years old. So he is mentally retarded up to this day. Both children had problems, had the same problem at birth. For one, the physical appearances cannot be seen at birth. Both of them have congenital hypothyroidism, an endocrine condition, which means that the lack or absence of thyroid hormones essential for the growth of the brain and the body. And as you can see in this poster, you need the treatment soon after birth to ensure that the baby develops into a normal adult. If the baby is not treated in time, the newborn really starts losing IQ points and can no longer be reversed. The newborn screening study group published its paper establishing the incidence of the conditions included in the first panel and it recommended the adoption of nationwide newborn screening. The number of hospitals expanded to 69 in 1999, and then 153 in 2002, and 323 by, by 2003. Expansion was very slow. On January 22, 2003, then President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo issued Presidential Proclamation 540 declaring the first week of October as Newborn Screening Awareness Week. Getting the support of the President was another good break for the Newborn Screening Project. But just the same, we had very slow progress in getting hospitals on board and we were advised to push for legislation. After a very short lobby of less than a year, we were fortunate to have Republic Act 9288 or the Newborn Screening Act of 2004 signed on April 6, 2004 with the corresponding implementing rules and regulations signed on October of the same year. We thank Senator Juan Flavier and Congressman uh, Antonio Yapha for taking the lead in the passing of this law. And of course, at the Senate, I do want to thank Senator Noli de Castro and then Majority Floor Leader Lauren Legarda, who played major roles in the passing at the, at the Senate. At the House of Representatives, we do want to thank Congressman Filomena Santiago San Juan uh, Congressman Gilbert Remulia and Congressman Shelo Crisel Lagman Ilustro. When I was the chairman on the Committee of Health back on 12th Congress, I was very fascinated about this newborn screening. I believe in its potential to reach milestone and be of help to our patients. So enough, here we are. I truly believe in its importance to potentially detect fetal and disabling conditions on newborns at a very early stage and in turn be given the proper diagnosis and management. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. RA 9288 institutionalized a national newborn screening system that is comprehensive, integrative, sustainable and collaborative it gives every baby born in the philippines an opportunity to undergo newborn screening the significant highlights of the law are the doh is the lead agency there is an advisory committee that actually represents government private academe and professional societies the law provides that it is the obligation of the health worker to inform the parents or the legal guardian of the importance of newborn screening at birth. DOH and PhilHealth shall require health institutions to provide newborn screening services as a condition for licensure and accreditation. 
The law also created the Newborn Screening Reference Center at the NIH or National Institutes of Health of UP Manila to serve as a technical partner of the DOH. And most importantly, it included newborn screening among the benefits package of PhilHealth. Newborn screening is now part of the newborn care package. We thank all the health secretaries who made this a reality. Senator Juan Flavier, Secretary Alberto Romualdez, uh, Secretary Manuel Dairit, uh, Secretary uh, Francisco Duque, Secretary Pauline Obial, and once again, Secretary Duque in his second time as Secretary of Health. President Arroyo, as a major supporter, devoted an episode of the President's Hour of Newborn Screening, and we believe that this episode wherein she actually interviewed parents and children made an impact into the program. The past 25 years had a variety of campaign materials. This is our classical pink brochure. We had billboards all over the city. This one is actually in front of uh, the Quiapo Church. We had a long-standing comic book which ran for two decades until just now we're in, we came out with a digital comic. Several of the coordinators and volunteers accepted radio and TV interviews. It was not just me. Practically anybody who was comfortable in taking on an interview went on radio and television. Newsletters were distributed to the coordinators, to the hospitals and policymakers. Of course, with progress in technology, we had other forms of campaign and education, a source for practitioners and the general public. And um, this website actually answers practically any question about newborn screening. Now, aside from the official website, newborn screening also has social media accounts like Twitter and Facebook. Hashtags now are used in social media channels during the celebrations of the National Newborn Screening Week in the country. We have the Volunteer Youth Leaders for Health, a network of proactive, service-oriented and young leaders from universities across the country. This group has taken newborn screening as one of its major advocacies. Now, they have actually conducted many seminars among college students. They have set up seminars uh, for various health professionals. And they continue up to this time, conduct webinars in support to reach out to the students, not only in college, but now even into high school. Now, when the law was passed, we thought the journey was over. Actually, that was just the beginning of a colorful journey. So where are we now? Now, as of December 2020, newborn screening is being offered in more than 7,000 newborn screening facilities. And a newborn screening facility is a hospital, a birthing center, or an RHU that will handle the sample collection and the submission of the filter card to the laboratory. The newborn screening facility is also in charge of recalling a patient if ever there is a positive result. So at this point, I would like to share with you what happens uh, in a newborn screening facility when a, um, when a sample is taken from a baby. So take a look at this slide. If you look at this, uh, the beginning of newborn screening, it really starts even before the baby is born. We expect the health professionals to actually educate each other, educate the parents, and tell them that newborn screening is important. By the time they go to their life, to their birthing center or hospital, or wherever the baby is born, 
the newborn screening coordinator in the newborn screening facility will now get the sample, collect the sample from the heel of the baby, put it in the filter card, and as you can see here, it actually will be picked up by a courier service and will be sent to the lab. Now, at the laboratory, when they run the test, and right now we have 29 conditions in the panel, once the results are completed, they actually send it back to the newborn screening facility. And as you can see here that the newborn screening coordinator plays a significant role because if it is positive, they have to recall the patient. If it is negative, they still have to give the result to the family. And if ever the family uh, do not have a private specialist, then they will be sent to the continuity clinic. Now, looking at this slide, I want you to take note that all of our samples have been uh, handled by the courier service since 1996. So when COVID struck the country, you can just imagine the problems that we had. And in one of our episodes, we will talk about exactly how the hospital sent their samples to the newborn screening laboratories. So now I mentioned to you now that there are more than 7,000 newborn screening facilities in the country. And as you can see in this map, they really are all over because it is a requirement for licensure and accreditation. So they must offer newborn screening. But where do they send their samples? So to come up with a more efficient program, together with the Department of Health, we decided that we, were, we are going to come up with regional testing laboratories. So in other words, the reason we are doing this on a regional scale is because we wanted to bring down the cost because it is expensive to set up a newborn screening lab. So now um, we have seven, we have seven newborn screening centers. Now the newborn screening centers actually has two components. The first part is the testing of the sample and the second component is the follow-up of the patient. So a newborn screening center is not an ordinary lab. Most laboratories will just issue the result to the requesting physician. In a newborn screening center, the lab is expected to look for the patient so the treatment can be started immediately. So in other words, a newborn screening center is equipped with a laboratory that complies with the standards established by the Department of Health and the National Institutes of Health and provides also a follow-up for the newborns who tested positive for one of the conditions in the panel. So every newborn screening center has a license only for three years, and they will have to apply for reaccreditation. Now, this process ensures that the quality of service and testing in all the newborn screening centers uh, is maintained at all times. So where are the newborn screening centers? Newborn Screening Center Northern Luzon is hosted by Mariano Marcos Memorial Hospital and Medical Center. Newborn Screening Center Central Luzon is hosted by Angeles University Foundation Medical Center. Newborn Screening Center National Institutes of Health is hosted by University of the Philippines, Manila. Newborn Screening Center Southern Luzon is hosted by Daniel Mercado Medical Center Institute of Health Sciences. Newborn Screening Center Visayas is hosted by West Visayas State University Medical Center. Newborn Screening Center Central Visayas is hosted by Eversley Child Sanitarium and General Hospital. And Newborn Screening Center Mindanao is hosted by Southern Philippines Medical Center. By coming up with this program, 
of original setup, we have been able to bring down the cost of testing. So the question is, are we going to open up additional newborn screening centers? We are planning to open up another one in the Mindanao region, and we are also looking for a host at the Bicol region. So the plan for the country is to have a maximum of nine to 10 newborn screening centers, implementing the comprehensive newborn screening program in the Philippines. So once again, the newborn screening center is in charge of the testing of the samples and the short-term follow-up of the patient. So in other words, the newborn screening center is in charge of closing the case. Is it positive or negative? They have to recall the patient, make a final diagnosis, and then after the diagnosis is made, they have the responsibility of passing on the patient to the continuity clinic. Now, the continuity clinic really started only in uh, the late 2014. Uh, early on, we just assumed actually that when the baby has a diagnosis, that the a private physician or a government physician will continue the care of the patient. But during our reviews, we realized that some of the patients get lost. They don't follow up. They don't take their medicine. They don't take their special milk. And we decided that, you know, for a, a national program, we were going to introduce the concept of a continuity clinic. So, so at this time, um, if you can afford to go to a private physician or a private specialist, you may go ahead. But if you do not have a, uh, you don't have the, the means to go to a private specialist, then the program will take care of connecting you with a specialist in a government hospital and help you with the long-term care. So for all of our conditions, the, uh, there are many ways of treatment. Some are given medicine, some are given special milk, some just need to prevent exposure or trigger factors. So this time, the continuity clinics play a very, very important role in the long-term follow-up of our patients. And once again, in our episodes, we will talk about what the continuity clinics will do and are capable of doing and how they are monitoring the patients. So to date, there are 14 regional continuity clinics. But I do want to mention that the Western Visayas region has added 15 satellite newborn screening continuity clinics in realization that patients live far, they are in different islands, and it's extremely difficult to follow up the patient. So every continuity clinic has a, a part-time pediatrician and a, uh, a full-time nurse. And I can tell you that right now, each of these clinics handle hundreds of patients because we have confirmed already quite a big number of patients in uh, across the country. So the continuity clinics are part of the National Comprehensive Newborn Screening System Treatment Network, equipped to facilitate the continuity of care of our patients confirmed with one of the conditions. And I think, you know, you will appreciate also how, how they bring the medicine and the special formula to the doorstep of our patients. Another realization of the program is that we don't really have many geneticists in the country. So we have, we lack geneticists, endocrinologists, hematologists, um, genetic counselors. And once again, uh, to benefit the program, we discussed with the Department of Health the possibility of setting up a Center for Human Genetic Services uh, in different parts of the country. Right now, the only one with a comprehensive program is actually uh, the University of the Philippines, Manila at the Institute of Human Genetics. So we wanted to duplicate what we had at NIH 
another one probably in the Visayas, and then another one in Mindanao. And after a few years of uh, discussion, finally, last year, they agreed that uh, we will set up the Center for Human Genetic Services in strategic places in the country. So at the moment, we have the National Institutes of Health uh, taking care of Luzon. Then we do have a satellite regional center for human genetic services in the Visayas and another one in Mindanao. So how does this, how does this um, become part of the program? The continuity clinics now are going to be partnering with the Center for Human Genetic Services in the long-term care of the patients. So at this point, let me just uh, say that um, as the program progressed from 1996, together with the Department of Health, NIH, together we, with the with the newborn screening centers and the regional offices of uh, the Department of Health, we realized that we needed other players in the program. And for that, I'm very thankful for the cooperation of the different sectors so that indeed newborn screening can be a comprehensive program for the country. It has been 25 years. And um, this slide shows you the 25 year journey of the program. So let me just walk you through this uh, slide and, um, and uh, show you how far we've gone having worked together. So on the left side is the, uh, the panel of disorders. And as you can see that in 1996, we only had uh, five conditions. Uh, congenital hyperthyroidism, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, PKU, homocystinuria, and galactosemia. In the year 2000, we replaced homocystinuria with G6PD deficiency. In 2012, we added MSUD. In 2014, we actually started uh, with uh, introducing expanded newborn screening, and we actually started with 28 conditions. And then just uh, in 2018, we added another condition, uh, making it a total of 29 conditions. So actually, what this is saying is that uh, we don't have to get another heel break. We don't have to get another sample. From the same sample, we can screen anywhere from 5 to 29 conditions. So um, looking at the 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 right side showing the facilities and the coverage, you can also see that we really started with very humble beginnings. And I, as I said, in 1996, we only had 24 hospitals. But as you can see that even at the Department of Health came on board in 2000, the number of, of hospitals did not increase dramatically. And moving on to 2003, when President Arroyo came on television, the number of hospitals likewise did not increase. And that was the time when we were advised to actually push for legislation. With the law being passed in 2004, you can see here that we had 324 hospitals by the time the law was passed. But once again, you can see in this uh, graph that the number of hospitals, the coverage in the country, just went up very slowly. And even when PhilHealth increased its coverage from 90 to 100% in terms of cost, the number of hospitals offering it, the number of newborns being covered were just slowly rising. Now, you can see here that by 2019, we have two shades of uh, two shades of the color here, and uh, uh, by this time, uh, PhilHealth agreed to cover even expanded newborn screening. But what is the message in this in this in this graph? It is not enough that you have good research. It's not enough that you have good people to to implement it. We had the law. We had the proclamation for the awareness in newborn screening. We had field health. What is important is that regardless of the law and the coverage by field health, 
each of the coordinators believed that was that it was important to implement in his or her hospital or uh, birthing center. The COVID-19 was a a, ma- a major was considered a major blow for for many things. And as you can see in this slide, just before COVID happened, you know, by this time we had 7,000 hospitals and we were covering 92%. Every baby being given a chance to be diagnosed for a condition that's treatable. So when COVID came on board last year, we were very worried because as I mentioned earlier, every sample is brought to the lab to the courier service. And when we had the lockdown, all the courier services also had the lockdown. But amazingly, in the Philippines, we only dipped by 10%. Even other countries are amazed by what we have done. And this only shows that if if the coordinator, if the parent, if the doctors, the midwives and nurses believe it is good for the patient, they will find a way for the sample to be brought to the laboratory. And this is one of the amazing stories actually in the Philippines. And as I share this story with other countries, they still cannot understand on why this happened here in the Philippines. And I, I tell you one reason. I told them it's not research, it's not the law, but it's the people. At this point, I'd like to believe that we have an empowered population. We have an empowered community. I don't have to be beside them. The doctors do not have to tell them. But we know that it's going to be important for the baby and that's why it is moving despite the COVID lockdown. It is already speculated worldwide that the year 2020 to 2030 will be difficult for the regular health programs around the world. But with newborn screening, we were able to show that we can actually make it happen but not a single person can do it it has to be the whole community putting it together so in this webinar series we will be discussing each of these conditions in the panel each of the 29 conditions from diagnosis management and long-term follow-up and we will also be as i said we'll be talking to patients who have been saved We will be talking to the parents, nurses, program managers who made it happen. But at the end of the day, as I said, this can continue to be a successful program if collectively we will support the program. Indeed, the newborn screening program is very successful. The mere fact it survived COVID-19 is a measure of its success. But this was made possible by the community effort. I'd like to believe this a whole of society and whole of government approach. This was made possible by the staff who believed in the program and went to the lab even during COVID. The experts who were willing to share their expertise even by, by telemedicine the nurses and the midwives who had to get the sample in the hospitals would like to give credit to the local government hospital units who actually participated in campaigns private companies who had the seminars for parents everybody who actually went on radio and television the youth leaders even the babies who were saved the parents whose children were saved so at the end of the day as i said it's really a a, a total effort from all sectors that made it happen. So so let me end with the national strategic framework for 2017 to 2030 of the Department of Health, where the newborn screening program is actually anchored. Where are we going? So this was actually prepared by DOH together with its partners. And as you can see, the targets are very clear. By the year 2030, 
we should have a coverage of at least 95%. There's always a fallout. We'd like everybody to be covered by, by PhilHealth. We'd like everybody, all the newborn screening coordinators to be trained. And that's why we're having this webinar. We'd like every sector of society to understand that it is important. But what I'd like to uh, share with you is that the DOH gave a uh, commitment that by 2030, we will be screening at least 95%. But our data shows that by the end of 2019, we were already covering 92%. We way far from 2030. So in other words, it is possible. If all of us will put together our ideas on how it can be implemented, then it can happen. So right now, the Department of Health, our lead agency, in partnership with the Centers for Health Development in the 17 regions, the DOH BARM, the newborn screening centers, newborn screening facilities in 7,000 hospitals and birthing centers, the NIH, and our experts, in looking for strategies to effectively implement expanded newborn screening and achieve the national targets. Newborn screening is about strengthening our society. It is about giving children affected with one of the disorders the opportunity to grow, study, and live normally. As shown in the past 25 years, the success of the newborn screening program is the collective effort of all sectors and everyone. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng newborn screening coordinators ng mahigit pitong libong ospital at paanakan. Kahanga-hanga ang inyong dedikasyon. To our virtual audience, please send us your comments, questions, or the list of topics that you want us to cover in our succeeding episodes. Email us at info at newbornscreening.ph. Before we end, I want to take this opportunity to present to you the new addition to our tools and learning, our eNBS mobile app. The eNBS mobile app is a one-stop hub for all NBS health workers on everything they need to know about newborn screening. It also features a rewards program that our health workers can use to earn points and use it to claim shop vouchers with our partners. Please catch the next episode and visit www.newbornscreen.ph for more details. The newborn screening program has now been in the Philippines for 25 years and has been continuously saving newborns from mental retardation and death. This episode has just introduced this very important program and will just be the start of our journey towards understanding the program. In the next episodes, we will be discussing the do's and don'ts of dried blood spot sample collection to avoid repeat collection and delay of screening. This and more here in Newborn Screening in Focus. Newborn screening is a gift of life. Bro.
process na magpa-NBS Ilang patak ng dugo ang kailangan para magawa ang test Makalipas ang 24 oras pag si baby lumabas Gawin natin ng NBS, alit sunod sa batas Oh, 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 oh